this morning? Good, good. I'm Tommy Hirsch. I'm uh, one of the fourth generation owners here at Swiss Lane Dairy. Uh, all of the uh, third generation, my dad and uncles and uh, mom and aunts and brothers are here. So uh, on behalf of the Swiss Lane Farms, uh, we're just really honored to be able to host event, an event like this, open up our dairy. Uh, we open up our dairy on a daily basis to try to educate our consumer on um, and really connect our consumer with their food supply. But this is a special event for us. We're all really excited to have uh, Tudor Dixon and Shane Hernandez here. We've got our full support behind them and um, just looking forward to hear their comments. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Carl Bednarski, the uh, president of Farm Bureau, Michigan Farm Bureau. Can everybody hear me all right just the way I am or you need the mic? Okay, I'll use the mic. Well, first of all, thank you, Tommy, for uh, letting us come to your farm. I know you, your whole family's been involved. Annie and your father, I seen them and talked to them here a little earlier this morning, but uh, uh, great operation. Uh, you can eat, and you know this is a working farm. Uh, you don't have to have your glasses on. You could uh, get the, uh, the pleasant uh, smell of money out here, so. With that, though, that's, uh, that's what we deal with, and uh, we're used to it every day, but uh, uh, thank you again for, uh, for uh, hosting us here. Also, uh, I'd like to just say welcome to all of you. We have a number of individuals here that are out to support Tudor Dixon for governor, and it's great to see everyone out here on a Monday morning and to actually take part in this. So this event, is put on by Farm Bureau. This is what our members do. This is our grassroots policy. The, uh, the county uh, uh, individuals, members, have made endorsements. Excuse me. Here, hopefully that's a little better. Okay. Yes, the, uh, the county Farm Bureaus have made endorsements and uh, recommendations to our state agri-fat committee and overwhelmingly their endorsement for governor is Tudor Dixon. And we couldn't be more excited for that. But let's not, but let's not forget though too, she has a running mate that each and every one of us are very familiar with. And that is Shane Hernandez. Shane, uh, where are you here? Right there, so thank you Shane. You know, we had the opportunity to sit down and speak with, uh, with Tudor. Uh, she was able to come to our board meeting with, for Michigan Farm Bureau. And we sat down and we talked about our policy concerns and some of the things that we're, uh, we're concerned with out there in the farm world. But the thing is, though, what we realized coming away from that event was Tudor's down-to-earth rationale in addressing issues. When we take a look at what farmers are facing this year, in many years, this past administration has uh, not really given us uh, a lot of, a lot of, that, a lot of time. We uh, we hear that the administration uh, uh, says that uh, we don't want to work with them. My goodness, we've reached out over and over and over with this administration to address issues and been turned away. So it's great to have a, a, a fresh person there that is taking the second largest industry in the state and recognizing it for what it is. So we are a force in this state, and we will continue to move forward uh, when we do that. Also, when we take a look at some of the things that happened pre-pandemic, I know it's going back here, but we don't like to, to do that. We always, in agriculture, like to move forward and see what the future holds. But let's just take a look at a couple of things that really should resonate with all of you in, in the audience here. We take a look at the greenhouse and garden centers early in that pandemic. What happened was those were shut down. Okay, so you say, what, what does that mean? Well, number one, that's a lot of people's livelihood. Number two, that was early in the spring, and also we had Easter lilies out for Easter. Well, guess what? Go look in your dumpsters. That's where you found the crop that was grown for that year because they could not sell them. But ironic was, though, other businesses could stay open and function. So what was it against agriculture that we had to shut down and they didn't? Also, when we take a look at the, uh, the seasonal labor issues that we have, we have a lot of people that come into this state 
that work seasonally and go back. How come at that point those individuals were held to a different level of testing and scrutiny than any other agri any other field of work? We take a look at the, uh, the hospitality industry, the building trades, and that. These people kept working 24-7 as long as they wanted to. But if you're involved in agriculture, no, you had a different set of guidelines that you had to follow, and it was specific to, uh, to those people. So, you know, it really hurt that, that fruit and vegetable industry that rely on that labor force, and uh, ultimately it shows up in your grocery store shelves in that, uh, that uh, uh, shortage and, and price increase. Also, we take a look at some of the permitting. We all were concerned with what comes out of Deagle the Department of uh, Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. We take a look at the permit for, uh, for, that was required for our, uh, our, our CAFOs, our large uh, animal uh, operations. Okay, so we take a look at that permit that was, was administered, but the thing was though, there was absolutely no sound science behind it. We tried to work with them to see where did you come up with these guidelines? They couldn't come up with answers. It came to the point then, farmers got together and said, we have to sue to make sure we can uh, still do what we do best out in the countryside. You gotta remember, those individuals on these dairy farms, we are raising our families. And it isn't just dairy farms, it's, it's feedlots, it's all agriculture. We are raising our families on these farms. We are doing what we can do best to perfect the, protect the environment. If you want to look at a true environmentalist, a true con conservationist, go look at a farmer and ask them what you're doing on the farm. <laughs> You'll get a different story, I'll guarantee you, and you will be impressed. But the thing is though, people don't do that. They don't go ask a farmer what's happening on their farms. But when we move forward though, let's talk a little bit more about Tudor. You know, when we take a look at the challenges in agriculture and we look at Tudor Dixon's background in manufacturing, we see that a lot of things line up very much. We see the same issues that are affecting both of our industries. And we're looking forward to having that relationship that we haven't had for the last four years. We're looking to have that involvement. We're looking to have that opportunity to talk to someone and share why we do things when we do things, and for the purpose of what. So with that, uh, I'd less like to say, I probably said it up already, but uh, you're seeing it, it's gonna be a tough race. We all recognize that, they always are. The thing is though, she needs all of our help when we move forward. She is the person that's gonna lead this state, and I think you couldn't have a better person to do that but we all need to get behind her and we all need to pull for Cooter Dixon to become our next governor. So with that, please join me in welcoming Cooter Dixon, our next governor for the state of Michigan. Thank you, Carl, and thank you to the Ursh family. Thank you so much for having us here today. It means so much to us to have this endorsement to launch Farmers for Dixon. It really is an incredible day. And it's such a meaningful day for me because honestly, when we were just a new campaign, the Farm Bureau agreed to meet with us. They were one of the first groups to sit down with us. And we sat together and they gave me a lot of time to hear what their concerns were. We went through all of the concerns that they'd been dealing with. And as Carl said, it wasn't too different than what we had dealt with as a foundry. but. I hear that this administration, I hear what Carl's saying, this administration has really crushed this industry. When you think about that, this is our second largest industry in the state. Such an important industry for the Midwest, for the entire country, for Michigan to thrive. And yet it is under attack. And that's what they tell me. No matter where I go in this state, I have farmers tell me, we are under attack in a way we have never felt in the state of Michigan. Over and over again, I hear the statement, if I could leave, if I were like any other business where I could get up and go into a new building, I would get out of here. That's a terrifying thought. I had a dairy producer say to me just a couple weeks ago, 
you know what it's like to walk through your facility with one of the government agencies. Yeah, we, I do. We had that, that same experience at the foundry. He said, you walk through and you talk to the guy and you're talking to the inspector the entire time and you feel like you've got a pretty good idea of what that report is gonna say. He said, I just received the report back from Deagle and I have never had such offensive language in a report in my life. He said, the language was horrendous, the citations they're threatening with me with are more than I've ever seen, and the fines are enough to make me say, you know what, I don't know if Michigan is the future for my family. That's pretty shocking. I had another producer, one of our food producers here in the state of Michigan say to me, I knew that they were going to change the guidance. They were reinterpreting the guidance. It was gonna be different. We knew that they were gonna come after us and say we had to do something different with our stormwater. So we came up with a plan. We went out to California, where we knew it was the most radical environmentalist, but they, they would have a plan that would keep Deagle happy. So we went to California and we got this plan, and it's been two years of going back and forth with this agency that says, nope, not good enough, not good enough. You don't have the answers, not good enough. And she said, I go to sleep every night wondering if I'm gonna lose the farm, and I wake up every morning wondering if I'm gonna make the government in Michigan happy. This is how we're treating our egg industry. It's shocking to me. That's every day. That's not even the pandemic. That's every single day is how our ag industry is being treated. It's shocking. I can't even believe it, but we were in Grand Rapids a few weeks ago. Well, last week, we talked to a greenhouse. Talking about the greenhouses being shut down and they said, I will never get rid of the letter that was posted on our door that said, you are facing jail time if you do not stop having curbside delivery. Curbside delivery. You could get marijuana curbside. You could get alcohol curbside. You couldn't go to a greenhouse. They've got a window this big. They've got a window this big to sell their products. Desperate to pay their bills. And they were facing jail time? This is the kind of government that we have in the state of Michigan. And people say to me, well, guess what? The pandemic's over. Why are you so concerned? I always look at them and I say, were you expecting the first one? You have any idea what Gretchen Whitmer could do to you again in another four years where she doesn't have a reelection? Do you want to take that chance? No, we don't want to take that chance. We want to make sure that this industry is supported in new ways, in greater ways than you've ever been supported before. Because another overwhelming statement I get from the ag industry is, man, we just don't have the infrastructure to take care of our businesses. We don't have solid bridges. We don't have the right roads. And if you haven't heard, industry is changing. And now we are much more technology based, but we don't have the broadband to get out to our farms. We are not being taken care of by the state of Michigan. And we don't have the people that are rising up to come into the industry because the state of Michigan isn't focused on our core competencies anymore in our high schools. But that's what we wanna bring back to the state. We wanna make sure that this industry is supported in every way possible because there is nothing more important to us than making sure that our farmers are here to stay. I cannot think of anything more important than making sure that our farmers are here to stay. focus on Michigan. Everything has to do with family, which I know is so important to this group here. I mean, here we are at a fourth generation farm. Nothing could be more important to the people of Michigan than family. And that is why we are building a campaign to make sure that you have the options that you want in education, to make sure that your students are learning what they should be learning in the classroom, and that is how to read, write, and do math. That if your student is struggling, it is your choice to find out what the best plan is for them. That the, there is no wrong path in education for any of our students here. And that our cities are safe. 
All of you are used to letting your kids go out on the farm, go out in the neighborhood, ride bikes, beat kids. Let's bring childhood back. Let's make sure. <laughs> Let's make sure Michigan is the state where it is safe enough to do that. And always, always partner with our businesses and job creators in this state. That is the number one concern, as Carl mentioned, I hear from the ag industry. We have no partner. And that is one thing that I heard when I started this campaign. When Gretchen Whitmer took over, there was this overwhelming feel, feeling that the idea was to go out and target the ag industry. Who targets the farmers? I mean, I've never heard of such a thing. We would like to target the ag industry in a way that we take care of you. We have heard what you've had to say. We have heard what you need. We are going to make sure we respond. We respect you and we partner alongside you. And we always know that the best way to take care of the beautiful state of Michigan is to support the people who care for the land. And I won't be doing this alone. You all know Shane Hernandez. Shane, why don't you come up here? I'd love to have you hear a few words from Shane as well because he is a wonderful partner in this. I am blessed to have him. And I know he's, he's been working with many of you for many years, so I'd like him to have a chance to say something. Thank you. Well, thank you. And I just want to tell a little bit about my background so you guys can understand why agriculture is such an important part of my life. I grew up in the thumb of Michigan in Croswell. Um, my mom grew up on a small farm in Lexington. My father's family settled in the Thumb as migrant workers, picking uh, vegetables in the fields and in Croswell area. Uh, he worked for 26 years at the pickle factory in Croswell. And when that closed, he went to work for Helena. Agriculture gave me the opportunity to go to college. It gave me the opportunity to succeed today. It is everything to my family. I grew up and my parents still live about six blocks away from uh, Michigan Sugar in Croswell. And I, my kids will go to Croswell today and tell me it stinks. And I say, no, that smells <laughs> like money. And it smells like Croswell. And it smells like home to me. And I love it. Um, you know, I, I loved growing up on my grandmother's farm, except during hay season. I didn't love that. Uh, but it was my favorite place to spend time. And uh, serving the 83rd, the old 83rd House District, which is one of the top agricultural districts in the state, uh, I made so many relationships, learned so much, and came to understand the importance of agriculture to Michigan and to the Thumb region. We don't have small towns in the Thumb if it isn't for agriculture. That is the industry that drives uh, rural Michigan, and I'm excited to be part of a ticket with Tudor Dixon that will treat agriculture with the respect it deserves as the number two industry in the state of Michigan. Thank you all so much. We are so grateful for this endorsement. We will never stop working for you for the next eight years. We're going to work for you. But I told Shane, just I'm, I'm outing you on this. I told Shane, I said, this is actually a 16 year ticket. And he said, gosh, I'll be really old. I'm like, Shane, you're 40. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are going to protect you for quite a long time. And it will be our honor. Thank you. We hope we get to serve you. And we hope we've earned your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Tudor. Thank you, Shane. Like I said, you've heard from those individuals. You heard it from the heart. You know, they are us. And let's see what we can do to get these individuals elected to the office as being our new governor and lieutenant governor. <laughs> With that, uh, that concludes this. Uh, this, uh, this rally, but the governor and lieutenant governor would like to meet all of you and shake hands, so please go out, have a coffee, have uh, a donut out there, and she would love to talk to as many as you as she can, and then we're going to prepare this uh, area here for a uh, media conference.